So I had to switch over to another account, but we can still continue here. The idea is creating content, uh, creating content for your audience. So this is not a bakery account, but I just had to log in with something. So the idea is I need to create content that is relevant to a particular audience. When I create, when I create a tweet, I have the ability to add text and links and all of that. So um, what we'll say here is uh, just for for me to have a place to write this. Um, publish content that is open-ended and audience focused. So audience focused. If I uh, have a particular product that is most important to a particular audience, um, I should communicate that way with that slang or that uh, form of speech and dialect so that I seem relevant to that audience. I wouldn't, if I had like a fun sort of daycare center uh, on Twitter here, I wouldn't be writing my tweets like very formal or very like too um, stoic and such. I would need to write content that is befitting of a fun educational environment of a, of a daycare center. I would be sharing photos and content that relates to that target audience. So you need to kind of know a little bit about your target audience or who you think your target audience who you're trying to reach. So that's the audience focused part. Um, I can have here, if it wants to behave this time, I have this place for animated GIFs. So I was going to try to show this one over here maybe. So you know, these kinds of uh, animated GIFs about food. So all of these. Um, would any of these work with like a much more um, serious restaurant, um, a sit-down restaurant where you have to put a reservation? You know, not not really. These are too fun for that type of business. Um, maybe something over here. Let's see, elegant dining. Might anything appear here? Um, they're still all. <laughs> It's still a little, a little maybe too funny, but oh, no, this one will work right there perfectly. So maybe if my business uh, can, if that audience is like that, maybe that might be something to pick. <clears throat> so this is about, or this one right here. Okay, this one. There's my fine dining um, restaurant uh, tweet that I will make. It's, it's a graphic. It's they're freely available for me to use. It's animated, so we got a little bit of sparkly going on. And then I could add that to my tweet in addition to the text uh, about, you know, we, we've got um, reservations are filling up fast for the Mother's Day celebration. Don't forget to call us, you know, Victor's Restaurant. <clears throat> so it took a moment, but I found something that was relevant to that particular more of a serious eating establishment, perhaps. As for the open-ended part of it, um, that's about not creating tweets and content that just ends like that. Like when I had, hello, this is my first tweet. Okay, that, that's it, the end. Nothing more can come from it. I made it a little bit more open-ended by going over to, by having it follow this link to get something else. It's a little bit more open, it does a little bit more. What do you think maybe is another way to do open-ended conversation in social media? Questions, exactly. You can simply put a question. Today is National Hot Dog Day. What's your favorite toppings on a hot dog? So we're asking people for interaction and to be active and so forth a question. But then what if I also put in the, put down a link uh, saying, uh, tell us your favorite toppings and then follow this link for a treat. So again, trying to make it open, trying to entice people, not just talking at potential customers, but talking with them. Uh, a back and forth, um, having a back and forth with them. Open ended could also be here. We've got polls. We can attach a poll, ask a question, and we have choices. People love those simply answering, and uh, you have it open for X amount of time, and people reply. And that gets activity. And that activity is going to show up under notifications. Again, I have to use this account just because it uh, it locked me out or whatever, and I don't think I can fully show that notification screen. That's a little private, 
but in that screen it would show you who followed you, who replied to you, who liked your content. And the point of that is when I identify people that might be interested in my stuff, someone liked my photo of my food, well, I can go follow, just as an example, let's say this person, they, follow, they did a like on my account, on my tweet, I can go to their account and look at what they're about and then give them a follow and they might follow back or I might reply to their particular um, tweet and they might I might get some reply from that so just randomly picking people um, so again I could click a follow they get the notification Victor's Bakery followed you they may then reply in kind with another follow uh, or maybe I can do a like or a comment um, I might reply to them there and then they they, uh, they they follow through so a lot of what social media is is talking to strangers in terms of these this could be a potential customer this could be someone that might buy my product so uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Worst case scenario, they ignore you. You reply to them and, you know, nothing happens. Okay, worse case scenario, they reply and say, leave me alone. Okay, no problem. Moving on. There's uh, 10 million other people I could be communicating with, more customers. Um, in all of the years that I've been doing this, because I've said before, not only do I teach this stuff, but I'm also involved in businesses, that we make websites, we do social media, we do this stuff for real clients. In all of these, this like decade or, or more, um, I've n I've had it very very few times that someone replies like "Leave me alone" or "You're you're you're fake" or like "I don't want your product." It's very rare, and I've made like millions of tweets. Well, I don't know millions, but I've made lots of tweets, and it's like less than one percent that uh, that I would get negativity. Um, obviously if i if i create content in a positive way i get that uh back myself or the business gets you get positivity if you give positivity so something to think about there the um hashtags let's talk about hashtags over here these are um the trends that are happening uh, concepts today is Taco Tuesday so hashtag Taco Tuesday a hashtag is basically an active link that shows everyone tweeting about a particular topic they've added a hashtag Taco Tuesday so here we have uh, lots and lots and lots of tweets about that in uh, what are the latest ones who are the people uh, that have uh, that hashtag who, what are photos and so forth and also let me say really fast this is a public venue so if something pops up here um, that we're not expecting you know we're all grown up so we'll be okay um, so who knows what will happen because it's live that's one of the good things and the bad things about Twitter that it it can be very spur of the moment and um, unfiltered and such so anyway, uh, I'm not a glutton, I'm an explorer of food, Irma, Irma Bombeck. So someone mentioned Taco Tuesday. Let's say, how can I use this to my advantage? Let's say I have a restaurant and I sell tacos. And so today is Taco Tuesday. People are sharing the hashtag Taco Tuesday. So I could write a tweet that uses the hashtag Taco Tuesday and somehow capitalize on that in that it will say, Thank goodness it's Taco Tuesday to celebrate. Here's a taco on us. And then a link to the website, Victor's Taqueria. Dot, that's how you spell Taqueria, right? Taqueria? Anyway, dot com and um, sale 99, whatever. So. I then could add a graphic or an animated uh, GIF or whatever, but this is what's like trending, this is what's hot at the moment, so can I jump on that bandwagon? Obviously, if, I have, if, I'm, a, um, if I'm a real estate agent, I'm going to have a very hard time thinking about how can I jump on the Taco Tuesday bandwagon. But checking these trends over here under, these, under the hashtag symbol, uh, 
you know, reveal what's going on. What about these other topics? Something about the zoo. Etc. So again, just kind of um, the um, content uh, that I browse and try to find something relevant regarding my business. I can put the I can do search up here also. Uh, San Diego uh, eateries. So I'm going to see other companies. I'm going to see people. So someone mentioned something. I don't don't mind me as I enjoy the coastal delights of San Diego eateries. So this is just a person. Uh, oh, actually they're over at Rooster Teeth. So I could uh, I see. Um, I see people's tweets, people's content, and I could then, if something is relevant, reply, like, follow. This is a large aspect of what a social media marketer does. This is a job that you can get hired for for businesses to, to do, to run their Twitter, to run their, their social media, to interact with people. So part of the assignment throughout the week is, is this sort of thing about um using the network to search keywords to search hashtags to interact with people to post to like etc well um, a better way than this than this basic feature that comes with uh twitter is to use perhaps tweet deck Let's check out TweetDeck over here. Let's go to the address uh, tweetdeck.twitter.com. Now, because I'm using an account that I've already set up, I'm not sure if yours will look exactly like mine. So we'll see what happens when we go there. Tweetdeck.twitter.com. Uh, mine pops up like this new ways to tweet with TweetDeck, and then I think other people's are showing slightly different. What is that screen? Then we should see something that looks like this. Where it's these columns. So the cool thing about this is I can set up, I think as many as I want, columns about um, keyword searches and other sorts of activity. In my case, I see that I've got um, a column for home. So this will show me the tweets and content of those accounts that I'm following. I also have a notifications column, so any replies or likes or whatever are appearing there. I also got an activity. Uh, so this is kind of showing you friends of friends or the activity of those that you're linked to. If you don't see some of these, I'll show you how to add them in a moment. And I had previously, as an example, set up a column to monitor cookies keyword and a column to monitor Comic-Con 2019. So I see here, as I'm talking, I've seen all of these tweets up here. And I scroll over, and there's all of these. So eight minutes ago, this was up, this was tweeted, this was shared about Comic-Con. Now, you know, mere seconds ago, this stuff appeared here about cookies. There it is right there, where cookies work. So, this is a really cool interface for using Twitter effectively in terms of I can make up all of these columns that I want. I can put keywords, I can put locations, I can put um, you know my keywords of my products, of my potential customers, and I'll just get this constant stream of content, which it pauses when you, when you scroll down here. 
if I want to look down here, okay, what's this about? So then the point of this is I'm identifying people and to make cookies. So I start eating the cookie dough. Okay, so Angela, she made her cookies. Well, the point of this is I can perhaps identify a person that might be interested in my business. I can then click reply right here and say, you know what's better than, than making your own cookies? Other people making you cookies. Follow this link for a free cookie. You know, something like that. I've identified people that might be interested in my product, my brand, etc. And then I talk to them. I, I will talk to strangers, potential customers, because um, you need to do that. You're not going to just uh, automatically assume that I created my Twitter account and I'm going to get followers. You have to tweet original content. That's why the requirement of the 10 tweets. You have to monitor hashtags. You have to be actively replying to people, conversing with them, or liking their content. If I don't know what to say, at the very least, what I could do is click a like. And now that person got a notification, either on their computer or on their phone. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. At that point, they might move on with their day. They might look, who's Victor's Bakery? And then at that point, they might say, irrelevant, moving on. Or they might say, oh, that cookie looks nice. I'll like that. Or I like all their stuff. Let me follow them. Better yet, they've got so much great stuff. Let me click that link to buy one myself. That's the best, best, best case scenario that your social media then results in actual sales. But again, 5% or less of your followers and activity and such is actually going to result in a direct sale. So it's all about being active, making people aware that you exist, so that you can bring up those, those, those numbers. Uh, at the left side, I've got add a column. So up here, it shows the basic sorts of columns. Show me, it's, I'm going to turn on that one, trending. Show me what's trending. So first I have to filter it here, Tuesday thoughts. Let me add that one. So now I've got a brand new column, hashtag Tuesday thoughts. This is going to be scrolling by. And then I can, um, again, reply. I can like, etc. If I no longer want a column, I've got the, the little, uh, whatever that icon means, sliders. Click on that, and at the bottom I've got remove. And on the left side, I can just start to also search. San Diego Comic-Con 2019. So then I get a column of that keyword as it appears. So five minutes ago this, seven minutes ago that. You can also do something like this. This is kind of advanced in terms of um, you can also put in the Twitter address of a particular account, and then you will you will see their tweets. This is a sort of a way to mo what's that? Like separately, just one monitor. Single. Exactly. So that's what I did there. I put Southwestern College's Twitter address, and now I have their own account just showing up there. This is cool for like a sort of like competitor analysis. I want to look up other um, restaurants or food businesses. I want to monitor what they're tweeting about and this is the point of this is to sort of see like what's trending or to get inspiration what is the competition doing and I'm not saying then to then steal their ideas I'm saying you look at what they're doing you get your own inspiration you do your own version of it I saw someone share an amazing photo of a cookie I think I can make that kind of cookie too looking at theirs I want to get my own cookie take out my phone and try to see theirs and take the photo and try to see it so you know don't steal their photo it's their photo 
but looking at other people's accounts, you can get the idea to um, to do your own thing. I think there was another way to do. Okay, here's another here's another good one, perhaps. Um, see up here on the search, I did a special, and there's a link somewhere here that explains all these more advanced searching techniques. Um, what do you what do you think I'm trying to do right there by what I wrote? Did you say that again? Yeah, so who is ever replying, who's ever talking to them? Show me a column of people tweeting to this account. This is a way also, because all of this is public by default, unless someone goes to their settings and changes it. What I'm seeing here is, show me the tweets of people that are tweeting to at a particular account. The purpose of that is, to, to use one word, to, to snipe your competitor's customers. If this particular person is tweeting to this one cookie shop, and they're saying, I had a terrible experience at your place, your, your clerks were so rude, I'll never come back. You know, that person is complaining to that company. I've identified that they're unhappy with that company, that competitor. I can then swoop in and reply to them and say, yeah, it's really bad when customer service is terrible. You know, our clerks are trained to help you the best way possible. Maybe you'll give us a chance. Here's our address. So identifying your competitors' customers is very easy to do by um, just typing that little search string right there. Uh, to colon and then the person's email address, I mean uh, Twitter address, and then you'll see it. This is mostly the theoretical aspect of it that I wanted to talk about in terms of um, the basics of setting things up, the more advanced tweet deck screen. Tweet deck is just a sort of like an advanced Twitter screen. And um, it's more about trying to use it and learning it as well as following as well as following some of those links that I've got in the in in um, in Canvas, there's a, a couple of links that are, that, that are very nice from the official uh, Twitter business page. So uh, I'm going to end the main lecture in a moment, and then you have your goals of what you need to do. This is an assignment that's going to take you about a week to do. But general questions on some of these things we talked about, or further explanation or anything like that. It's just about setting it up, using it, setting it up perhaps in an educational environment where you can make mistakes. Yes. And we use uh, a lot of hot hashtags, like um, when there's like cookies, pies, and like bakers stuff, right? Yeah, so. so we just, should, we, should we just limit it to one category? Should we just run it? I would say, from my experience, limiting it to three or less hashtags is good, because at a certain point, too many hashtags make you look like a spammer, because all the spammers are putting as many hashtags as they can. They're trying to reach as many people as they can, and when you cast a net that's too wide, you don't specialize and focus on the particular real customers. So I would say three or less. If you can put one hashtag, and a hashtag is kind of like a keyword, if you put one keyword into your tweet, one topic of your tweet in one hashtag, you're fine. If you think maybe two or up to three would be useful, that's fine too. And I wouldn't go further than that because it looks a little spammy. Any other? Any other questions? Yes? Every web format that's trending topics updated, is it hourly, daily? That's a good point. I'm not quite sure. They have some sort of algorithm that when they sort of start to detect that something is hot and something is trending, it just changes. Um, I never quite thought about it because when I log in, there always seems to be kind of slightly different things most of the time. So it feels like whenever something seems to be hitting their 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 criteria, it changes. So um, maybe there is a definitive answer, but it just seems to be on some sort of algorithm. So here someone said, great cookies are hard to find. Well, here's a perfect chance for me to reply and say, they're not too hard to find. Follow this link for the best ones in the city. 
So this is an acquired skill. This is something about getting out of shyness. You have to think about in terms of, I want to use this social media, which is totally free, to reach an audience and customers that might want to buy my product. I'm going to get over my trepidation of talking to strangers because I, I have a business to run. I have a free tool that I can use to find the right audience and make sales and all of that, so I'm going to take advantage of it. See right here, Subway's doing it. They replied to someone. You can click there and see where that came from. Uh, cookies are life. Okay, so... <laughs> so, um, we'll have some lab time until the end of the day if you need it. And uh, again, check the requirements of the next assignment. Make sure you've got the, your bio and account all set up. Start your tweeting, but again, not don't do your 10 tweets today before you leave. Uh, use um, TweetDeck to search for some keywords and see what's going on in real time. Uh, you may be comparing things, because I've got cookies. Um, can you think of any synonyms for cookies? What else is like cookie related, cookie adjacent? Treats. So I would have. You can then arrange these columns if you drag them. So I can have a cookies column right next to sweet treats. Let's see where do I have that? Sweet treats versus cookies. So you would be appraising. You would be comparing and contrasting. You would see when you have them next to each other. You'll see like which are more popular just by looking at them. Like this one, 24 seconds ago. 40 seconds ago, one minute ago. That one just happened right now. This one hasn't changed yet. So this is live. This is when something gets tweeted somewhere in the world with that particular um, keyword or phrase and such, it appears. This is one of the things I really like about Twitter, um, that it's real time like that and really keep up to date with what's going on. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll have some lab time, and uh, if you need to work, you can work and use Twitter.